Hello, well in this film I'm going to make a leather watch strap and it's going to be for one of the watches I have and this has a rather naff nylon strap on it so I thought time to make a nice strap. So you're going to make a very simple watch strap it's a good project because you get a chance for some hand sewing some skiving, some edge finishing and generally you know have a bit of fun doing some leather work without using too much leather. <laughs> now I'm going to use some 200 year old leather. I'm going to use Russian hatch leather brought up from under the seabed and I've already posted a film about this leather so you can see a bit more of what it's all about. But let's get underway. I'm keeping this fairly simple so if you want to have a go at making your own watch trap you could do. So here's my watch and the first thing I'm going to do is measure the width and this one is an 18 millimeter so I need strips of leather which are 18 millimeters wide. I'm going to use the same leather for the upper surface and for the underneath. I'm going to skive it at the ends and wrap it round in each case to fit and I'll be sewing it, hand sewing it all around. So yeah first job find some strips for my limited supply of 200 plus year old Russian hatch. I've been struggling a bit to find leather that is long enough but I have got some pieces here so I will use these. I'm going to line with these two pieces which are a bit sort of irregular but nice and thin and I'm going to use these two pieces for the top surface because they've got some nice hatching and some quite interesting colour on them. First job to do is to skive off the ends. I'm just going to carefully thin off going back a fair way and get these skived down and I just want to taper it down so I can wrap it around the watch pins. So I'm going back a fair way. It's funny isn't it despite being over 200 years old this leather is handling very nicely. So what I've done and it may be hard to see the edges on camera but I'll show you with a gauge I've gone down to like a paper thin edge on the skive. It's just a bit over half a millimetre and then as you go back it goes up to about 1.2 and then at full thickness just under two millimeters. So it's a gently taping skive and the idea essentially with this is the same for both pieces. So this is the backing piece. Tuck it round and under and that will get glued down. Ditto with the top piece. Feed it through and that will come round the back and similarly get glued down and then it will all get stitched together so not only will it be glue holding it they'll be stitching as well and I'll use that approach obviously for both sides to make the strapping and it'll be a nice strong secure strap but equally it will be strong where it needs to be around the pins but thinner elsewhere and what I'll obviously do down at the buckle end is a similar sort of approach but also put in a couple of loops for the tab end to go through the whole end to go through. So that's the plan I will carry on working. I'm going to utilize the old buckles it's a perfectly okay buckle. What I'm doing I'm aligning the old strap and if I look at where the buckle hole would be, it would be roughly where my pointer is now. But I'm because I'm a bit short at the upper end, I'm going to do it slightly further around. So I'm going to bring the buckle pinhole to about there, just a tad beyond, and then I'm going to thin it down here and ditto on the other side. We're nearly there with the skiving, I'm having to go particularly carefully here. This is after all 200 year old leather. It's a wonderful fault isn't it? I think it's been underneath the sea. I think I'm nearly there for the buckle. To make the hole for the buckle I'm using one of these little push tools. They're quite good. They have a little like screw ratchet on them 
and uh, you can get various size tips. So you can make nice little holes of different sizes. I'll just drill out and we can see if we've got it in roughly the right place. Okay, it's quite fiddly because it's so small. Right, well that gives an idea. So there'll be a similar wrap around and stitching. But um, I'll make that hole a bit bigger and then I'll be able to get on with the gluing. So just to try and show you how I'm constructing this, I've got the what would be the lining lever typically and I've wrapped it around the buckle. So I've got a hole for my buckle there for the pin. Same approach on top. That will then stretch round and all get sewn. So there you have it. So for the glue up I'm using Feebing's Levercraft cement. I find this is quite good, it dries quite quickly, has a fairly fast sort of like tack to it. I'll put a little bit on each surface, not too much, otherwise you get it going literally everywhere. Give it a smudge around. And then press it down. Like this, you'll end up with multiple layers all glued, so it sort of laminates. It makes it quite a nice, strong arrangement all in all. So funny, I'm so used to working with belts which are large and I'm having to suddenly work with something that really is relatively tiny. So that's my inner piece, my lining piece, all stuck. I'll just check I'm getting that roughly the size. Yeah, that's good, it's a tad longer, which is what I wanted. So what I do Next is I glue this down totally and obviously have it going through as well. So I'll get some glue going onto this. There we are, so that's thinly coated all over. I'll get it through the buckle area first. Wrap that round as much as I can. and then press it all home. Still got to obviously do it on the backs. So it gets a little bit messy at this point, but I can wipe it off. So that's the first part all glued in. I'll repeat the same thing for this side. So I nearly forgot I need to make a little gap to put the little loop round so I'm just opening up a little bit where I've glued here so that I'll be able to get this top loop sewn in. So the loop will obviously go around near the buckle, just like on a belt, but I'll sew it in as I sew around. Just gonna use one of my rounding over strap end cutters. And what I'm gonna do is cut off the round end for the watch. So that's just at the, the other end, give it a nice tapered round end. And done. I need to just cut this and skive it, skive each end and tuck it in under in each case. So what I'll be doing is literally getting my skiving knife, thinning it off a bit at each end so I can then tuck it in without it forming a huge great mass. Moisten it so very much like in the belt keepers, do the other end and tuck it in as well. So I'll do that next. Well, having opened up to get the keeper in, I've got the little tapered end keeper in both ends and I've put a bit of scrap leather underneath it just to get some slight thickness so that the whole end of the strap will fit through it okay. So that's like that. To get a good spacing for the stitching line, you can just use a saddler's crease tool. Some people use dividers. And what I want to do, I'll just try it on a rough bit first, is get fairly close to the edge. So that's probably not bad, actually. I want my stitches to be close enough 
but not so close I could hit problems if my line goes slightly off. So I think that's probably about right. So what I'll do now is I will go around the edge and that will give me a straight line for my stitching. So I've marked my stitch lines, it's all ready for the stitching chisels. So I'm going to use these to make my holes, try and keep them as upright as I can without hitting my camera. And then make sure that they go through fairly generously the other side and then you know you've got a good hole. So I'm using a small size stitching chisel, you can get them in different sizes. Just a little tip, if ever you find that your chisel is a bit sort of tricky to extract, just pop a bit of beeswax on it and it'll be a lot easier. I'm just going to saddle stitch around, so I've punched my holes now. I'm using some Ritzer um, Tiger Thread, I find this very nice. I'm using the 0.6mm, so the thinnest version, and this is colour 7, which will go reasonably well. So saddle stitch, I've popped films, a few films, on doing things with saddle stitch. Essentially two needles and I thread the needles. So to stop the needle coming off, I punch it through the thread and that just keeps it on, the little hook there. Pull that through. Repeat it for the other end. So I've got two of them here. And I've got a saddler's clam. Now I've popped a film up on steam bending and making one of these. And on my website, you can actually buy the plans to do it. And if you do, you'll be helping a charity called MDS for people with bone marrow failure. So your money will be going to a good cause. It all goes to charity. It's the charity I support. Um, start really wherever you like. It doesn't really matter. Actually, I'm going to start thinking about it off one end. So probably better to start where it's not going to shout when you come to do your overlap. So entirely up to you. And we'll start down here. Got the weight of a watch. I just need to get this a bit firmer in. There we are. Okay, so sandal stitch, I always enter from the same side, leave a little loop pull back to clear the hole, coming with the other needle pointing slightly at an angle, pull it through, not doing this terribly well at this minute, so you've got two loops, draw them together. The reason I leave a loop is so I can see if I have actually stabbed the other thread. I'm not quite at my conventional angle because obviously I'm trying to do this for camera. So again, leaving a little loop, pulling the threads back to clear the hole nicely. Other needle goes in pointing in the other direction from the other side. Again, leaving loops, I've got nice movement there so I haven't stabbed the threads, draw them together and carry on. And just repeat that all around. If you want to see a in-depth film of me doing saddle stitch then there's one where I'm doing the decorative frontage on a belt and I go into it in great detail but I won't duplicate it at length here. So I'm making my way around. So there's something very so sort of therapeutic about hand sewing. So I've just been going along with my stitching chisel making the holes. It gets a bit more tricky as you get towards the keeper. Obviously you want to sew right behind the keeper so that it is actually anchored in. And I find the best way is normally without stressing it too much is to try and just poke your chisel in there. I'm sorry it's difficult to show you this on camera. But get in as close as you can and make sure you get a good few stitches underneath. 
So always a little bit fiddly, but you want to make sure that you're going in upright. So I'm rather, if I bring that up, you can probably see it a bit better. I'm rather pinching it in there. It's not very happy being pinched in, but and I can soon straighten that out afterwards. I've slightly uh, creased that. <laughs> so I've got, yeah, I've got a good number of holes underneath there, which is what you want. So that you're effectively stitching your keeper in at the same time. Well, this is where I'm coming to this slightly tricky part where you're trying to get behind a keeper. And you just have to try and find us enough give really to make it sewable behind. And with a little bit of perseverance, it's okay. <laughs> so I'll just show you a few of these stitches. So I'm now having to open up the keeper. I hope you can see this sort of on camera. It's probably not the easiest thing to see. Find your way of levers pressing through on the back. And bring your needle through. But it's okay, it's um, just a matter of taking your time as it comes. And once you feel you've got in enough from one side, just slip your needle underneath and approach it from the other side. One of the good things about using a, a Ritza type thread, being a, sort of like a polyester, you can burn the ends over and it gives you a clump, it stops it coming through. I've obviously sewn back three or four stitches, but um, that's what it looks like, you see? It gives a nice decorative stitch. So what I need to do next is stain and clean up all of these sides and give it all a polish. So I've just marked my little hole, checked it looks central, and now I'm just gonna pump away this little, little tool. It's going through two layers, so it's actually quite a bit to go through. Yeah, that's a very nice, neat and tidy hole. So I'm gonna do a hole each side. I've just sort of rounded off the edges with this little edge beveler tool. So I'm using a number two, so a very fine one, just to take the sort of like the corner edge off all around. And what I'm gonna do now is apply some leather dye and just to blend it all in. Now when the dye goes on, it looks quite a lot darker, but it will actually dry lighter. I will then edge seal um, to waterproof it. And that will be everything done. I, once this dies on, while it's still wet, it's a good time to get the fibers down. So I'll put it on the little machine and get these fibers all down. So I'm using the Just Wood Edge Rounder. I find this very good. Obviously you can do this by hand and get perfectly good results. And quite satisfying at this stage, you begin to see it for what it is. Mm, get the smell of the nice Russian leather as well. I'm using a, a wooden burnisher here just to lay everything down and to also burnish the bits I didn't get at so easily. Right, I'll let that dry and then I will see all the edges. Well, there it is, a finished watch strap. So I've hammered down my stitches, I've burnished my edges, sealed them with some sealant and some wax. I like a natural finish on edges myself. So there you have it, one 200 year old watch strap. I'm very pleased with the way that turned out. It was a fairly easy project and quite an enjoyable one. And of course, a very good way of using very small scraps of leather. So hopefully it will last a good few years, my 200 year old watch strap. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and see you in the next film. Bye then.